Hi, my name is Elliot Mack. I'm with Whitecraft Technology, and today I'll talk to you a bit about a system that we build called the Prevision Virtual Studio System. And what Prevision essentially is, it's a, it's a visual effects pipeline that runs in real time in a suitcase. And so what it does is it does essentially all the components that are traditionally done in a visual effects pipeline, except in real time, so that you can see what, what you're doing. It's essentially built around tracking exactly what a, a real camera does. So here we're tracking a, a camera. And so this is, as I move the camera around, you can see the background, the virtual background moves around as well. So here we have a green screen back here. And I can tilt the camera. You can see a little bit of this uh, jungle environment we're in here. And so if I zoom the camera in, you can actually see the background zooming along with it to the point where, since we have a highly accurate lens calibration system, oh, got, the wrong, got the wrong one, we can rack focus background and foreground to defocus the background, focus on the foreground, just like you would a traditional cinema camera. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're measuring all the details of the lens. We have a very uh, accurate lens calibration system that can measure all the intricacies, the entry pupil location, the, no, the focal length, the focus distance, the uh, distortion parameters of the lens, and then recreate that in real time in the CG. What we're essentially doing is bending the CG world to match the live action world in real time. You can see it through the, the finished composite through here. And what this lets you do is on an actual CG shoot or a green screen shoot, you can see what you're doing. And this it sounds like a little thing, but it actually fundamentally changes the way in which a composite compositing heavy visual effects shoot is done. Because the camera operators simply operate the camera in the way they're accustomed to. Prevision brings in all the data, processes it, does the real-time keying, you know, compositing, etc., and lets them see exactly what the shot is going to look like, or an approximation of the shot. So there's a couple of different ways of, of using this. You can either use it uh, under some conditions, you can make uh, a finished composite in real time if you have a relatively simple background and you have the, the background evenly lit, etc. Many times for especially very tricky episodic or feature film shoots, you're going to want to do some more uh, uh, post-production rendering. And for those cases, we built an entire pipeline that records the metadata matched to time code for each individual frame and then pulls it into the post-production pipeline. And we can bring it into Maya and Studio Max and Nuke and After Effects and, and, and Buju and Synthize and all the different applications that make up a modern post-production pipeline. And that way you have a bit of the best of both worlds. You have the immediate onset, you know, in-camera effects of being able to follow a shot naturally. Uh, and it really changes how the operators shoot. When they can see the virtual components of the scene, they'll automatically compose naturally uh, along with the live action components. So we're tracking with a combination of technologies. We have a, a InterSense optical camera that looks up, and as soon as we can see four or five of these markers overhead, we can lock to our position. And the nice thing about the optical tracking is that it scales. So if we want to go on a larger soundstage, we simply print larger markers and put them up. In addition to that, we use the uh, AirTrack. It's a high accuracy gyro system. And that provides us our rotary data. And that, that provides us that high, high accuracy data to catch the nuances of handheld motion. So I should show you a bit of what we do. The nice thing about this is that it means that you're not restricted traditional dolly shots. You can just grab the camera, put it on your shoulder, and we can track handheld in the scene. We can look up, we have a garbage mat going so we can see up into the sky over here, and the operator gets to see the virtual scene composited with the live action scene. There's our chair, we can compose with our chair, move around, and this really is a radical change in how visual effects shots are done. It makes it in many ways just much more fluid and artistically organic than, you know, chalking off marks, running around with a measuring tape, you know, doing all the details that aren't fun. Right. This lets you focus on the fun. So can you break down to, for us what the components of the system are? What, sure. What do we actually need to get the job done? So first of all, you're going to need a camera. The system works essentially any high-definition camera. 
And so what we've built is pieces that snap onto the camera and use uh, standard matte box rails or other similar camera mounting. So there's an InnerSense optical camera that looks up, and that's what it has a 90 degree field of view coming out of that. That's what provides us with our initial position on the stage. And as soon as this little camera can see five of those targets, we can lock to that position and we know exactly where we are on the stage. We fuse that with the data from the air track, which is a high accuracy gyro system. And between the positional data of the InnerSense and the rotary data of the air track, we can solve exactly where the camera is. And the magic of that combination is that it doesn't matter what we're supported on. You can put it on Steadicam, on handheld as you just saw, you can put it on a Technocrane, and it's all the same to the system. As long as you have targets overhead, or if you're outside, if you can send the, uh, the camera forward and just place the targets over people's heads like you would um, a, a standard set, set extension, right? You normally build the sets up to about eight or nine feet, and then it's just a bunch of plywood. And you just put these targets overhead, and you can track the outdoor, outdoor visual effect shots just the same way you track here. So we also need to read the lens data. And to do that, these are mechanical encoders. But in production, what we typically use is a Preston Cinema uh, zoom and focus control. And so it's a standard piece of onset gear. Every assistant cameraman and focus puller is familiar with it. And that's the key, is we built our system around fitting to existing production methodologies. So those rotary encoders are not custom? They're basically fizz units? and Yeah, we, we built these for ourselves for most, you know, just to fit this. For most production cameras, they're already using a Preston fizz unit. We just plug into that. It makes it simple. That's and fantastic. for Fujinon lenses, they already have an internal data socket. We just connect directly to that and read those directly. So either way, it, it, there's good ways to making it work with ex standard camera equipment. So that's the side of the camera. We have a data cable that comes out. We have a single plug that provides all the power and data to our systems. And this, this is, looks like a little thing, but this is actually born out of production needs. We started with several connectors to get all the components together, and we found that under the heat of production, it was very difficult to get all those connectors plugged in, in you know, together quickly enough. They're going to haul the camera off the Technocrane, it's going to go up on someone's shoulder, and they're going to run around. Well, they have to do that very, very quickly. So we re-engineered all of our cable systems to use standard industry heavy-duty you know, Limo connecting, connection systems, and then it makes it very, very fast. Again, it sounds like a little point, but under the, the production pressures, things have to be very simple, very effective, and very direct. So once the data is there, the data comes down the umbilical cable. So is it one tether? How are you tethered? Yeah, we have a tether, just a tether that brings both video, synchronization, and data um, all to the system, as well as power. We power our sensors from a power brick back here. That way, we're not affecting the camera power supply, because frequently the camera already has to power usually a Preston uh, box and several other components and they're frequently you know pretty heavily loaded these days so we don't affect the camera